Hello and welcome to this video looking at how to calculate resultant electrical field strength and resultant electrical potential, which is part of the electrical fields topic in AQA A-level physics. So what we're going to be doing in today's lesson is looking at how to calculate the resultant electrical field strengths and resultant electrical potentials in different parts of an electrical field. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to calculate electrical potential calculate electrical field strength and calculate the resultant electrical potential or the resultant electrical field strength between more than one charge. So in today's lesson we're going to be looking at the electrical field strength part of the specification and also the electrical potential part of the specification. Now because we've got electrical field strength and electrical potential we can use their values to determine resultant values when multiple charges are present. Now this can be easily determined when the two charges are aligned in a straight line with each other. So if we wanted to work out the resultant electrical field strength at point X between two objects, we've got to carry out the following. We need to work out the electrical field strength at point X from charge A, and work out the electrical field strength at point X from charge B, then sum the two values. Now beware, because they're likely to be acting in opposite directions, because they're each going to be acting towards that charge, okay, they will probably be subtracted from each other, even though we're saying we're summing the values. So it's important that we carry out all those processes where we work out our key values for charge F, from charge A and charge B to get your electrical potential at point X. So how do we work out our electrical potential from point X? Okay, well, we're going to do the same thing when we're doing the electrical field strength. So if you wanted to work out your resultant electrical potential, you've got to work out the electrical potential at point X from charge A, and then work out the electrical potential at point X from charge B, and then sum the two values again. So let's have a look at, at an example of this. So a question could say to you, work out the electrical field strength at point X when charge A has a charge of plus 4 nanocoulombs and is 0.45 meters away from the point X, and charge B has a charge of plus 1 nanocoulombs and is 0.30 meters away from charge X. So the first thing you do is you work out the electrical field strength at point X due to charge A. So you use your equation of electrical field strength is Q over 4 pi epsilon epsilon zero r squared that's the radial electrical field strength equation and we're going to assume because you can see that these are point charges or particles that it will be a radial field as produced by this particular charged object so you then do 4 times 10 to the minus 9 over 4 pi times by 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times by 0.45 squared now, that then gives us an electrical field strength at X from charge A of 177.6 newtons per coulomb uh, to the right. Now, then you go for charge B, and then you can do the same idea. So you say E equals Q over 4 pi epsilon 0 R squared. Again, putting your value in for your charge, 1 times 10 to the minus 9. And then putting our value in for R, which is 0 0.30 squared. And you get a value of electrical field strength of 99.9 .9 newtons per coulomb to the left. So to work out your resultant, you would sum the two. Now because one is acting to the right and another is acting to the left, you would actually minus one from the other. So as a result, okay, what you can therefore say is that you can say that um, it's going to be a hundred, it's going to be 17.7 newtons per coulomb uh, to the right. Now we can do the same as well for electrical potential and, and it's a very similar process. So if you wanted to work out an electrical potential at point X and you've got two charges Charges, charge A, which is plus 4 nanocoulombs, and it's 0.45 metres away from point X. And you've got charge B, which is minus 1 nanocoulomb, and is 0 0.30 metres away from X. Well, the first thing you can do is you can work out the electrical potential at point X due to charge A. So the electrical potential equation, F, especially for a radial electrical field, is V equals Q over 4 pi epsilon 0 R. So you pop in your values, 4 times 10 to the minus 9 for charge, 0.45 for R, and pop your values in, and you get a potential at, at X due to A of 79.9 of uh, volts. And we can do the same for charge B. Again, our charge here is minus uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. Our value of R, our separation from X, is going to be 0 0.30 meters. I should also note, by the way, in all these questions, our value of R is taken from the 
center of uh, the object okay because that's where you, that's how you determine r from so even though the diagram shows it to the surface it's in fact from the center so therefore we get a value uh, of potential at point x from charge b of minus 20 volts so you, you'll notice here that we don't tend to uh, put the direction says to the left to the right like we did for electrical field strength instead what we've done is we've given the plus or the minus which comes from the, the the equation itself the idea that a plus charge and a negative charge will give you different pluses or minuses in your potential so then to work out your resultant you're going to do 79.9 minus 20 obviously you would add them okay but because one's a negative it's going to become a subtraction so therefore the resultant electrical potential at point x from both of those charges is plus 59.9 volts now like i mentioned before it does make a difference about the if, whether the charges are positive or a negative so let's now run that through again however instead of having a positive and a negative charge we're going to have two positive charges so we'll have plus four nanocoulombs and plus one nanocoulomb so again you work out your charge at, at a uh, so at x from charge a so therefore you put your values in it's the same values as the last example so 79.9 volts and then we do the same for charge b but this time we're not doing minus 1 times 10 to the minus 9 when we're doing our charge we're doing plus 1 times 10 to the minus 9 so instead of getting a value of minus 20 volts we're getting a value of plus 20 volts so this time we work out our resultant electrical um the resultant electrical potential from this we're in fact adding the two values so now if there were two positive charges it would be plus 99.9 volts now, we can also determine our resultant electrical potential and our resultant electrical field strength if the two charges uh, can be found at an angle to each other, which can then form a right angle triangle. So what we can do is if we wanted to work out the resultant electrical field strength and the resultant electrical potential at, say, point X between two objects, which are um, not to go at an angle to each other, not in between the two of them, you've got to carry out the following. So you would work out the electrical field strength or the electrical potential at a point x from charge a and then you also work out the electrical field strength or electrical potential at point x from charge b but this time when you sum the two values you would sum the two values by using the pythagorean theorem so for example a question might ask you here to work out the electrical field strength at point x uh, where you've got um, the charge charge a is plus four nanocoulombs and 0.20 meters away uh, from x downwards whilst charge b is plus one nanocoulomb and is 0 0.30 meters away from x to the right so we would work out the electrical field strength at point x which you can do is q over 4 pi epsilon 0 r squared and pop in our numbers so we've got um, q being 4 times 10 to the minus 9 and we've got r being 0 0.20 so you pop that in and we get 899 newtons per coulomb acting downwards now we then do the same for charge b and then we do you know q is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 and r in this example is 0 0.30 uh, meters we pop our values in and we get 99 newtons per coulomb this time acting to the left so as a result what we can do is we can work out the resultant not by adding and subtracting because they're not in that particular string straight line um, situation but in fact by doing the Pythagorean um, theorem with the idea that it's the resultant because that's what's occurring between the two values so you can therefore say the resultant is the square root of 899 squared plus 99 squared so therefore it works out to be 904 newtons per coulomb but in addition to that you've also got to be able to to show the angle at which this this is orientated to so once again you've got to use your ideas of Pythagoras and trigonometry to work out your value so what you can do is you can say that the angle is going to be tan is equal to opposite over adjacent so therefore we can do tan or tan to the minus one uh, open brackets 899 uh, divided by 99 okay is therefore when you work it through 84 degrees so we can therefore say the resultant electrical field strength is at 84 degrees to the vertical so i hope you've uh, enjoyed that particular lesson where we've looked at how you can work out resultant electrical fields and electrical potentials because remember what you've got to be aware of doing for your exams is for electrical field strength 
understand that electrical fields are represented by electrical field lines and understand electrical field strength, work out the magnitude of electrical field strength as both um, in a radial field, a uniform field, and just as a force per unit charge. Whilst for electrical potential, you should understand the definition of absolute electrical potential, understand the zero value of infinity and electrical potential difference, understanding how um, work can be done in moving a charge and equipotential surfaces, and finding that the magnitude of V in a radial field is given by V is equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon 0 R. So if we've been successful and we've learned in this particular lesson, we should be able to calculate electrical potential, calculate electrical field strength, and also calculate the resultant electrical potential or the resultant electrical field strength in a space between more than one charge. So thank you very much for watching this particular lesson on resultant electrical fields and resultant electrical potentials, which is part of the electrical field strength topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.